So we've all heard the no true Scotsman fallacy from Marxists, claiming Marx wanted a worker's paradise, so anything that doesn't end up being that cannot be Marxist. So we hear that what occurred under Stalin, Pol Pot, Che Guevara, Fidel Castro, Kim Il-sung, Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong-un, what occurred under them wasn't true Marxism. Now I could agree with that to some, some degree actually. There was no real concern for the workers and the state became the owners of the workers, but that is what inevitably occurs when Marxism is tried, so it all becomes a moot point. But here comes the real Marxists. This lady, whose tweet you are looking at right now, who I am only talking about because she seems to be heavily involved in the Canadian Marxist movement and has a decent number of followers on Twitter, so I'm not sure if she's a big deal, but she is some, some sort of a deal. So she, much like many of the other real hardcore Marxists out there, don't really actually go with the no true Scotsman fallacy. I have to give them credit for that. They put their money where their mouth is and have some positive things to say about the likes of Stalin, namely this. Whether you like it or not, Joseph Stalin was one of the greatest anti-fascists in the history of the anti-fascist movement. Under Stalin's command, the Red Army defeated the Nazis and saved several ethnic groups from Nazi extermination. This is a legacy we cannot forget. Okay, so first off, is she so deluded as to think that Stalin did this out of the kindness of his own heart? Does she really believe that Stalin has a warm spot for humanity? Every shred of evidence we have on this subject suggests that he was a pure psychopath with no remorse or regard for anyone but himself and for a few select family members. He routinely had political opponents assassinated, held heresy hunts in which God only knows how many people were killed, not to mention the Holodomor in which millions of Ukrainians were killed by a man-made famine under the policies set forth by Stalin. The list of atrocities can go on for days, but the point is this lady on Twitter is trying to paint Stalin as some force for good, some force for social justice, which is nauseating, not to mention historically ignorant on a colossal scale. Soviet Russia and Nazi Germany had a non-aggression pact titled the Molotov-Ribbentrop Act until Germany broke the pact and invaded the Soviet Union. This is why Stalin fought against the Nazis. It had nothing to to do with Stalin's moral outrage over the atrocities committed by the Nazi regime. If Nazi Germany had never invaded Soviet Russia, Stalin would have not cared in the slightest about any ethnic group being killed by Hitler. This Clara lady has deluded herself into thinking that Stalin was truly someone who was interested in fighting on the behalf of the downtrodden and oppressed. Meanwhile, Stalin slaughtered the downtrodden and oppressed by the millions, so I don't know what she's talking about. Which leads me, actually, to my main point. Because I don't know what she's talking about, but I do think I know where this is coming from. Which is that this Clara lady exemplifies the worst form of ideological brainwashing one could possibly have. And what I mean by that is this. She praises Stalin for being anti-fascist. That might be true. Stalin could have very well been an anti-fascist, and it actually seems obvious that he was. Although, as I said before, it becomes a moot point. I don't care if it's a communist or a fascist holding a gun to someone's head. The moment they pull that trigger, regardless of their political, social, or economic ideology, they are now a part of one group together. And that is a group of psychopaths. Pitiful human beings who are willing to kill, torture, or starve other human beings in order to force others to bend to their will. This would be like a vegetarian being so blinded by the belief that being a vegetarian makes you morally superior that they would claim Hitler, who was a vegetarian, was chiefly concerned with the well-being of living creatures and therefore we should all say words of praise about Hitler. That would be pure nonsense. But I hope this girl keeps tweeting, and I hope more Marxists like her come out and say what they truly want to say. It makes it much easier to intellectually humiliate them, not that it was difficult before. And that, to be candid, is a guilty pleasure of mine. But that's all for now. Please like and subscribe. Later on.